Hey guys, Sean here from the China Culture Corner. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about a topic that's been very interesting to me as I've worked with Chinese companies going overseas for the last 10 years. And that specifically is, what are the advantages, not just with regards to China as a country, but Chinese companies that could allow China to so you know beat the West, so to speak, um, or at least to do a lot better in terms of their expansion than say Western countries are right now. All right, let's get into it. So, before we get started, just a bit of a disclaimer. Now, I never really talk about politics too much when I'm talking about China. My main focus is on talking about companies, talking about business, people, culture, etc. That being said, um, there are a few points in terms of why China might be able to beat the West that do relate to at least the country, the political system, but not to say that one system is better than the other. That's not my focus. It's just simply something to be aware of when we're talking about the overall development of China and how Chinese companies might be able to benefit from certain policies, certain existing ecosystems when they're looking to expand overseas. So with that being said, let's get into it. Now, when it comes to the government structure and the way the government operates, there are some big differences between, say, China and my own home country of the USA. Uh, you know, on one hand, my, my home country of the USA, um, things might change every four years based on elections, whereas in China they're able to have a much longer term focus. And this leads to things like having a lot more resources and energy put into infrastructure development, um, things like uh, lifting millions, of, hundreds of millions of people, I should say, out of poverty over the last uh, you know, few years, or at least that effort has been put into place. And then as well as the effort of turning areas like Shenzhen and the Greater Bay Area into regional tech hubs, which um, very well could challenge Silicon Valley in the long term. Now, again, we're not saying one system is good or bad, but these advantages have allowed China over the last few decades to really grow into a global powerhouse much more quickly than, say, any of the Western powers have. Uh, and so that's certainly one thing to take into account if we're talking about whether China might beat the West or if Chinese companies might be able to slowly but surely uh, unseat their Western rivals. Now, in the case of COVID-19, we've also seen the benefits of the Chinese government's uh, overall planned approach, we'll say. And that includes being able to maintain a what was being now called a zero COVID policy for a much longer time than other countries may be able to, as well as in the face of enormous outside pressure from countries overseas that have wanted China to open up. And this, of course, has had uh, a much greater impact on the well-being of the Chinese people and uh, their able ability to return to a normal life. And this is something you'll see in my comments if you follow me on Twitter. I'm very much pro the Chinese approach to COVID. But in addition to, say, a societal or an overall country point of view, we also see the benefit to companies, whereas China, being some of the factories to the world, um, by being able to strictly control monitoring and testing for COVID, the country has been able to ensure factories can stay open, uh, which of course ensures that the Chinese companies have less of an effect overall, um, and they're able to continue supplying customers, whether uh, businesses or consumers in overseas markets. And so, again, that's another benefit I see as to not just the overall country, as well as the development of companies and their ability to keep developing, especially in the age of COVID. Now, another of China's advantages that seems rather indisputable to me is uh, the fact that it is now has a very strong manufacturing base, not just for, say, regular goods, fast-moving consumer goods, but also for high-tech. And this has been built up over the past you know, few decades. Um, for example, all iPhones are made in China. Many consumer goods, whether you know, tech-based or not, are, are and have been built in China, and this has allowed uh, regions such as Shenzhen and the surrounding areas, which now make up the Greater Bay Area, are now able to serve as an important research, 
whether it be know-how, whether it be facilities, whether it be the talent that can serve um, the manufacturing industry. And this has allowed many Chinese companies, uh, smartphones for example, but also other ones, uh, electric, vehicle, electric vehicles is up and coming, is allowed this strong base to support the future growth and expansion of many Chinese companies. And it's not to say that Western companies can't make use of this as well, but uh, combined with other factors, such as long-term planning, such as other factors I'll mention later on in this video, um, it really serves as a very strong driving force and the support for Chinese companies uh, that want to manufacture goods to then sell to overseas markets. Now, another thing I've always admired about China and the Chinese people is what I personally have seen as this constant willingness to learn and openness to learning new things. And I know some people will comment saying that, oh, well, you know, the Western education system is, is very open and much more advanced, but it's, uh, it's, it's almost closer to street smarts. It almost is closer to uh, the willingness to just say, you know, try and find the best ideas no matter where they are. And this might include uh, your Chinese parents sending their kids overseas to learn um, you know, new skills. Um, but it also pertains to, you know, say I've worked with so many Chinese companies and it's very common that you might see you know, CEOs that are willing to try and adopt systems uh, from Western countries or Western com companies. Um, I think the key example for me on this is from when I worked at Huawei in the past. And there was so much of a focus on learning what we could from, say, U.S., the U.S. companies, whatever really was going to help the company develop the most. And, and this might partly result from China's underdog status, the fact that it's been developing, but it also just really seems to be an overall mindset. Not to say that Chinese society overall is more open than, say, Western countries, but in terms of that willingness to learn, willingness to find the knowledge you need where you need it in order to succeed uh, really seems to stand out to me. Now lastly, one thing I think is really going to play a key role in not just the Chinese country expansion overseas but also Chinese companies is the aspect of willpower. And that specifically is something that I've seen a lot from my own personal experience working with Chinese companies uh, and also just understanding what life is like in China, seeing uh, you, know, gener you know, one or two generations of parents that are willing to work hard, far away from home, working in factories just to let their kids have a better life, whether it be uh, mothers and fathers working late at work to earn more money to help put their kids through, through school, uh, whether it be you know, employees from Chinese companies just going to overseas markets and working with basically nothing and just working as hard as they can just to develop the business. And that's, I mean, it makes much, it makes a lot of sense when you, you know, think about the, the so-called the China, China dream that has been promoted a lot over here. And that's something that people believe in. They want their country to succeed. They want their country to, to, you know, leave the so-called century of humiliation that uh, came after the, the opium wars in the 1800s. And, and this willpower, this willingness to work hard, overcome any obstacles, has really been something I see you know, day in and day out in China, as well as when I you know, read about developments in the news or in the history books. And so this is something that I sadly don't feel I see as much in the U USA where I'm from, um, to be honest. Um, it's something that maybe we see or hear more about from immigrant families, um, Silicon Valley, um, that sort of area. But um, I think it's very important if, uh, if the people of a country aren't willing to, to work hard, I'm not saying Americans aren't willing to work hard, but it feels in many ways that the Chinese are willing to work harder. And combined with the other things I've talked about in this video, as well as the fact that Chinese manufacturing is manufacturing has continued to increase in quality. Um, it seems to be a very strong driving factor and if that can continue into the next decade then it will likely continue to boost China's advantages compared to other countries.
closing, the things I've mentioned in this video are some of the things I think are very important to how China has developed as well as how it will continue to develop in the future. It's not a be-all, end-all list. It's things I've noticed from my own experience working in China. Um, if you have other thoughts or opinions or experiences, please, please feel free to share with me. Um, but I personally think that's important and will continue to be important. Uh, but I'd be very happy to hear what you think as well, too. Now, if you're interested in uh, learning more about my views on China, uh, business in China, the Chinese people, um, feel free to follow me on uh, social media, SeanUM underscore China on Twitter. And you can also subscribe to my website, thechinaculturecorner.com, as well as my YouTube channel, also The China Culture Corner. And again, if you have any questions on this video, questions on my thoughts on China, you can let me know in the comment section below, um, or just shoot me a message on Twitter, I'd be happy to talk more. All right. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next time.